Greetings all beloveds around the world. So today I'm going to show you how to powder your own carrot pods from a carrot tree. How to make your own carrot powder. This is a carrot tree over here. I've got a little friend again helping me. And this is the carob pod, if I can find one in here. Let me reach in. Here. And when they... Here it is. And when they make the carob powder, contrary to what you may think, they actually use the pod which is the sweet part, rather than the seed. And to eat the pod, it's actually quite sweet. I've got a seed here. Here's a seed. If you can see that. I'll put that in the garden. And the seed, it does have many uses. However, it was used, it was the initial um, method of weighing carrots of gold back in the ancient days. Um, and that's where the word carob comes from, is from carrot. Well, that's sorry, that's where the word carrot comes from, it comes from carob. So I'm going to show you how to make your own delicious carob powder. It's a great substitute for all you chocolate lovers. I know I used to be a chocolate lover. I still am. But I don't eat it these days. Unless it's, you know, caraform or something that doesn't have dairy in it. So I'm going to collect these. All these pods down here. These are fantastic to be um, washed. So I'm going to collect these pods all down here it's going to be a bit of a job that's okay and these ones on the tree and make some delicious homemade carob powder so let's get to it i'm going to show you how to do it down here a beautiful organic homegrown carob pods they're a little bit dirty so I'm going to give them a clean, a really good rinse with just regular, uh, in this case, rainwater because we have rainwater tanks here. I'm going to give them a good wash and then we are going to uh, break them up and break the pods up, take the seeds out and put them on a tray in which we can either leave them to dry for a few days or I'm in this particular case I'm going to put them on a baking tray and put them in the oven at about 50 degrees Fahrenheit so 50 I mean you know it's like a regular maybe mid mile day maybe a little bit more I may put it in the 60s or 70s to uh, dictate a, a sunny day um, and like a drying effect because we want it a little bit dry in order to ground them because they're quite moist now um, and we want them dry. So I'm going to give them a good wash and then uh, we're going to put them on a tray. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time washing. Now I've got a little helper down here. Hello. So, <laughs> so um, the way we break this, we're just going to, I can't do it because I'm holding the camera, but you can see as I've only, I've only just started, I've got a lot to do. I've been very busy. There's probably a couple of methods, uh, quicker methods the way I'm doing it, but you can actually use like a pair of pliers or like, wood cutters or something to break these or a sharp knife but um, I'm actually just gonna do it the old-fashioned way and break these by hand I mean I can't do it properly with the camera but 
eventually when you break it you're going to get the seed which I've put in here which is very difficult uh, sorry which is very hard I should say not difficult so let me try and get the seed out okay here's one seed right there it's like a size of a pea they're very rock hard they will break your teeth if you're not too careful so I will come back to you when I'm finished the whole uh, bucket and I've got my baking tray here uh, like I said I'm going to put them in at about 50 or 60 Fahrenheit which is just you know the same temperature as a warm day and uh, I will show you when I'm done okay so I just wanted to show you um, my progress so far I worked out the best method to open the carapod and that's actually to get a really nice pair of scissors that are um, pointed at the end which can help you slice through this part of the carob seed and you just go around this part of the carob seed and you can just peel it open like I've done here uh, and I've just collected all the seeds and yeah so th the scissors are the best way to split the pod and get the seeds out so as you can see they have the um, consistency they're a bit like um, popcorn kernels so um, they're all yeah and they are hard as rocks they are very very hard so uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to uh, take the seeds out and you can see I'm not even you know like I'm like a coarser way down the bucket I'm gonna keep those seeds in there and I'm just gonna spread these out and I'm going to put this in the oven for for about, you know, I'm going to monitor it. I'm going to try maybe four hours, three or four hours at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe, actually, you know what, maybe about 75, um, which is, you know, typically consistent of a normal mild day. Um, 75 Fahrenheit in Celsius, maybe between 25 to 30 degrees or 25 to 33 degrees, I think. Maybe, I don't know, but at least, you know, it's going to be about 75 degrees in the Fahrenheit in the oven. And I will just check that every hour and see how dry it is. Uh, and then after it is dry, then I will uh, pulverize it in a, um, in a bigger, like a big um, chopping pulverizer. And then I will put it in a smaller, finer one, which is like a coffee spice grinder. So first I'm going to dry it. So that's the that's the result. Let's go to the oven and uh, uh, put it in there. I'm not going to cook it. So at 75 Fahrenheit, you know, it's typically just going to dry as if it would be a hot day, um, and just let it take its time. And because I want this to be raw carob, I don't want it cooked. I can roast it if I want. And actually, roasted carob is very delicious. But then, of course, it lo loses its uh, nutrients. Would, I'm sure it withheld, withholds some of them, but not to the extent that raw carob would. So I want to keep it raw because I'm wanting to go back raw again. So I'm slowly transitioning now from a vegan diet back into a raw vegetarian diet. Um, and the best thing with any kind of transition is to incorporate as many different uh, foods as you can, natural foods, and really experiment, you know, don't be afraid to try different foods and to get to know different things. And, and you know, this is from a wild carob tree. Uh, the tree was there even before houses or anything were in the, were in the area. So... You know, it just shows you. And look at all these carob seeds. I mean, come on, that that is like hundreds of thousands of, you know, carob pods in there. One seed, it only takes one seed to grow a tree, you know. So I am happy to send people these. Um, I will sell them uh, maybe for a couple of dollars for, you know, maybe 50 seeds or something. So let me know if you'd like to purchase some and I'll... 
um, sell them. I'm not sure how legal it is to sell them. I, I have to find out the protocol about sending seeds and things online. But if you don't have carob seeds and you'd like to try, then by all means I'd be happy to uh, send you some so you can experiment and try yourself. Um, so yeah, let's put these in the oven. The smell is amazing. My hands just smell just like carob. Um, actually, I'm going to give this a little rinse first because I did pick up small, tiny fragments of dirt. Um, I did give it a good three rinses, but I'm going to do it again now. Um, that way, it'll be nice and clean when I put it in the uh, in the oven. So let's give it one more little wash, and I will see you after the drying process in the oven. Okay, that's a bit broken. It's there's still some chunky parts in there, and so what I've been doing is just tipping them out, and then you have to sift through them, which can take a little while to get the powder out. And there's some still chunky bits. It's going to take a while to grind up in the coffee grinder. You start with a um, smaller grinder, uh, sorry, bigger grinder, and then you keep going with the coffee grinder. And make sure you got a good coffee grinder because <laughs> you don't want to burn it out. I've been doing this a lot for the last few days, and you want to just take it easy on your coffee grinder. And your, I had a whiz that I was using that you saw in the other video. So I'm gonna put this back in. Hopefully grind it a little bit more, because that's even you can use it for drinks, it's okay. So here, oops, there's a little bit of water then. So here is the final result. You can't see it all that much, and there's still some grainy parts in there. And also what you can do, and what I would do also, is add another sift on top of this one to get those really, it's actually quite powdery now. But even just to get the rest of those grainy parts out, get another sift and put it on top and have a, you know, like have a dual sifting thing going on. So uh, you can see the consistency is actually really grounded and it's very soft and uh, the smell is great. So this just goes to show you that you can truly make your own homemade carrot powder healthy it's a great substitute for chocolate doesn't have the toxins in it it's very uh, animal friendly dogs can eat it 
this dog here loves it <laughs> she's been eating these pods here she saw me eating them and then now she starts eating them a lot so it's it's good for dogs it's okay uh, it doesn't have that toxin in it that is fatal for uh, dogs which is it's found in keiko it's found in chocolate and the coca so uh, this is good so yeah i have got another three courses of a bucket to get through <laughs> so uh, i'm going to go off and start putting those ones and drying those out and um, I just wanted to show you that it is very possible to have all your favorite foods in natural form. You can grow them in the garden. Like everything you eat, like let's just say if it's manufactured or synthetically produced, you know, in what a, whatever capacity that that may be, you can do it in natural form. And everything's come from the natural form anyway. It's just that with mass production and commercial commercialization and manufacturing everything's done on a mass scale you know and it takes that inti intimacy out of making your own you know making your own you know um regular household um produce like carob or flour or um your own pasta or and growing your own vegetables so like i told you everything's going back organic for me now everything's going back to basics and simplicity so yeah i hope you enjoy